Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video we're going to be checking out how we can take a simple food photography image and we can really pump it up and give it a much more refined look, a little bit more characteristic to it. We can tweak the colors, get some grain to really stand out and give it a really nice processed look. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that in Lightroom right now. So here we are, there's our starting image. And as you can see, it's okay. It has a nice characteristic, it's a nice grain in this, a nice color, some great looking colors in the vegetables and so on, but it lacks any real sort of drama, any kind of real sort of character to the image. So I'm gonna take you through and process it in the way that I did at the beginning of the video. As always, we've got a free preset available. The link is in the description below, and that'll get you most of the way through. But stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to take you through some extra steps for this particular image and show you how and why I did certain tweaks above and beyond the free preset. So let's crack on. As always, I'm going to take you step by step through each of the panels in the develop module in Lightroom so you can go through and work with me step by step. So let's just make sure that the image is as shot. So I'm just going to hit the reset button at the bottom to make sure there's nothing being applied to this image. And let's open up the basics panel in the develop module. And you can see we're at pretty much parity for everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and just make some tweaks to the image to get it roughly where I want it to be. So I want to give it a sort of strong sense of contrast. And I'm going to bump the contrast up on there. I'm not going to go crazy, probably around 25, somewhere around that kind of region. That looks pretty good. You can see that really accentuates the darker areas. And later on, we'll take a look at how we can open those up and crush them a little bit to give it a sort of kind of modern look with that crushed black look. Next up, we're gonna take our highlights and I wanna make sure that when we make further tweaks in this, that we don't lose any of the detail in the sort of the egg and in the lighter areas in the woodwork and the flowers and so on. So we're gonna grab the highlights, gonna bring those down, dull the image down a little bit, Probably around the minus 30 mark, somewhere in that kind of ballpark looks pretty good. And we're going to open the shadows up just to make sure we don't lose any shadow detail while still retaining that kind of contrasty look. Next up, we're going to just grab the blacks. We're going to pull those down a little bit. You can see once we start to do that, we get a nice sense of depth to the image. Somewhere like that's looking pretty cool. Now then, I want to really boost the clarity, but I want to bring the color down because I want to control the colors later on. So I'm going to grab the saturation slider to start off. We're going to drop that down to about minus 25, somewhere like that. You can see that generally strips out a lot of the color information. But because we're dealing with food, I want to bring back some of the, the sort of color we've got in the yellows, the warmer tones. So I'm going to grab the vibrant slider. I'm going to bump that up. It's about plus 50, 55, somewhere around that kind of region. That's going to give us some nice color back into those warmer tones in the image. And then finally, we're going to give some real detail to this woodwork, which is going to help it stand out and give some real character. We're going to grab the clarity slider. We're going to pull that quite a way up. Now, again, remember, these are just starting points. So every image you're going to work on is going to have its own characteristics. And because we have a lot of detail in this image, we find that the clarity slider won't have any real detrimental effects like it can do where you're dealing with high contrast areas like between land and sky. So the high clarity on this works pretty well. And you can see we're getting pretty stylized look already. So that's the basic edits. The next thing I want to do is jump over to the tone curve. And in there, we can start to make some additional tweaks to the black tones of the image. Okay, so we're going to use the tone curve now to bring out where we've got the sort of the darker area in this. I want to crush those shadows. And by crush them, I mean where they're currently pretty much black. I want to make them a very dark gray, and it gives it a very modern look, the kind of thing that's very in fashion at the moment. Now, to do that, we're going to use the tone curve. We're going to ensure that we're in linear mode. So if we're not, we can just use this little simple curve in the corner. Click on that and I'll switch between the two different modes. So now I'm going to just drop a couple of points on there, the intersecting points. And now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this bottom sort of node. And we're going to drag that up. And you'll see as I start to bring that up, I'll go too far. You'll see the blacks will now stop being black and they'll start to get this grayness to them. Now that's obviously way too far, but let's bring that back down to probably around about there. And you'll see what happens is those blacks start to lose their blackness. And this is why we kind of bump the contrast and the clarity up so high at the beginning. So there's before, there's after. So you can see we're starting to get some nice color alterations in there, or some tone alterations. Couple of final little tweaks. We're gonna grab this node, we're gonna bring it down just ever so slightly. And we're gonna give a, a sort of mid-tone, 
a tiny, tiny sort of adjustment in there to the mid-tones. And finally, we're going to come up to the sort of the, the highlight area. We're going to pull that up. So again, there's the before. There's the after. So it gives it a kind of nice stylized look. That's all we're going to do with the tone curve for now. So we're going to move on now to some of the other alterations. Now for this next part, we're going to skip over what I'd normally tend to do, which is go into the HSL, the hue, saturation, and luminance, and make some alterations in there. We're going to come back to that at the end because that's kind of specific to this image. So stick around to the end. Like I say, I'm going to show you some extra little things that I'm going to use to tweak the colors in this image where I need to adjust them. So let's just jump over to the split tone in section. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some color, some tonal information, some color information into those highlights and into those shadows to give it a nice stylized look. Now for the highlights, I want to bring in some kind of, just a slight purple kind of tinge to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this up to roughly where I want it, kind of around about there. And then we're going to bring some saturation in. And we're going to find that our highlights will start to take on a slightly purple hue. Nothing too much, but what it kind of does is just give some color, some tone to this, this whiter shades in the image itself, in the highlight area. So we're going to do the same now with the shadows, but we're going to bring in some warmer tones. We're going to bring in some orangey kind of colors, and that's going to help accentuate the tones in the wood and so on. So kind of around about, kind of around about this point where we're kind of getting in between the oranges and the yellows. And let's just bring some saturation into that. We're not going to go mad with this, but you'll see it starts to warm the overall tone of the image up nicely. That's looking pretty cool. I kind of like that. So if we do a before and we do after, you can see it now brings out some nice warmth into that wood, get some nice definition in there. And that's all we need to do to the split toning section. Now the final adjustment I'm going to do to this image before the color information is drop down into the effects section and we're going to use the dehaze slider ever so slightly to give a bit more contrast to the overall image. Really, really subtle with this. Probably going to take it up to around about that kind of point. Before and after. It's not that much being adjusted, but it's bringing just a little bit of subtlety into it. And finally, we're going to just drop in a little bit of a post crop vignette just around the edges, just to sort of draw your attention into the focal point of the image. So we're going to really keep this quite subtle, but at minus 15. So you can see that just darkens off those edges a little bit and kind of draws attention to the main image itself. Now, obviously, if you want to go back in and tweak, you're more than welcome to go back in and tweak. But this is kind of the point that I want to leave it at. Now I'm going to jump over to those extra steps and we're going to take a look at how we can tweak some of the color information to really help things pop out nicely. So for this section, we're just going to use the luminance panel and we're going to control the greens, the oranges, the reds and the yellows, which are kind of the, the main focus points in this image. And I just want to give them a little bit more strength in the overall image itself. So let's start off by going into the red section. Let's give that a nice bump and keep an eye on the things like the tomatoes. The carrots might pick up a little bit of this, but it's predominantly the reds are going to be boosted. So we're going to take that up, going to give that a nice little bump. Kind of around about there looks pretty good. So let's before and after. And you can see that just the, the red and the tomatoes just gets that little bit more oomph to it. We'll do the same now with the orange. And we're going to give that a kind of around about the same kind of boost. And you should see the carrots and probably a little bit of the inside of the egg, especially when you're looking at things like the egg down the bottom right hand corner, the sort of the stone. So let's give that a bit more of a bump up there, kind of around with the same kind of figure. And the same with the yellows, but a little bit less because we tend to go, if we go too far with this, things will start to look a little bit too fake. So let's just take that up, probably about, kind of around about there. And now I want to do the greens. But I'm going to do the opposite with the greens. I'm actually going to reduce those. Now, keep an eye on the fruit and the vegetables and things down in this bottom right-hand corner because as I start to reduce that, you'll see that the greens in there start to get more intense. So we'll bring that down, probably kind of around about this kind of figure. So we get a nice boost in there with the green tones before and after. And it kind of shifts the entire emphasis of some of those colors in the image and kind of just gives it a little bit more oomph to those different colors that I kind of like. So let's do before again and after. So you can see it's quite a nice change that really does help some of those color characteristics stand out. And that's all there is to it. 
Like I say before, there's a preset available. The link is in the description that'll get you to the point before we've done the color alterations. So you're gonna get pretty close and then you can tweak your image to get it exactly where you want. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.